we have to find out these diverge or converge. So what do we see on the first one? Alternating, right. So we have limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 1 over the square root of n plus 3 is equal to 0. And so it passes the nth term test. Now, if it did not pass the nth term test, we would not say <clears throat> diverges by alternating series. We say diverges by, alternate, uh, by nth term test. And then, can we confidently say this? n plus 4 is less than 1 over square root of n plus 3. Can we confidently say that? Or would we have to take the derivative of this and show the derivative is negative? What do we think? Are we confident with that? Yeah, we are. No problem. So, converges by alternating series test. Second one, or off to the right there, well, how would we uh, test this one? What would we use? Geometric. Geometric? No. Ratio, yes. The n factorial means it's not geometric now. If I remove the n factorial, that would certainly be geometric. All right, so we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. We don't really need the absolute value on this because it's all positive terms. There's no negatives. Not only that, if you have a series with all positive terms and it converges, it converges absolutely. The only way a series can converge conditionally is if it's an alternating series, if it has negative values. All right, anyway, that's kind of a side note. Uh, n factorial over <coughs> 2 to the n. Uh, this right here is n factorial times n plus 1. So the n factorials will cancel out, but n plus 1 is left over. Limit as n approaches infinity. We have an extra 2 on top and an n plus 1 in the denominator, which is equal to 0, which is less than 1. Uh, so converges by ratio test. Next one, what's that? One third to the n. Geometric, geometric. that's geometric. Uh, R is equal to one third, which is less than one. Uh, so we can just say converges by geometric series. Uh, the next one is, I can't use direct comparison test because it's just a little bit too complicated. Uh, so we're going to have to use limit comparison test. We will compare this to uh, either 1 over 2n, or you could probably even get away with just making it 1 over n. But either way, what we compare it to diverges by harmonic series. Then we uh, we got to keep going with this. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the third plus n plus 6 over all this junk times uh, 2n over 1. Now we can multiply the 2n through, but we would get 2n to the fourth over 2n to the fourth. Only the leading terms matter when you're going off to infinity. Uh, so this is equal to 1 which you have to say is finite and positive, or the either way around, positive and finite, either way. Uh, so uh, diverges by limit comparison test. Uh, on the AP test, I would write limit comparison test out. Don't put LCT, but for me, that's fine. So you gotta be able to recognize it when you see it so far. What's the next one? Any ideas? Integral. The integral test. We have a function and its derivative. Uh, so we can let u equal x squared plus 3 du is equal to 2x dx. But I don't have a 2x dx. I got a, uh, just an x. Uh, 1 half du is equal to x dx. We, we're not concerned with multiples of the derivative. That's fine. We can handle that. Uh, we have the limit as b approaches infinity 
of the integral from 1 to b of, uh, let's see, what would we have? We'd have 1 half and 1 over square root of u du. But that 1 over square root of u is really u to the negative 1 half. To do the integral, uh, we add 1, so we have the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 half. <clears throat> Uh, add 1, we have u to the 1 half, but then times 2. Uh, we have 2 times x squared plus 3 uh, to the 1 half, or the square root of that, of course, from 1 to b. So there's the integral, not only the integral, but then the u plug back in. That's equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of, uh, the halves will cancel out. We don't really need those. Uh, we have the square root of b squared plus 3 minus the square root of 1 squared plus 3. But that is, for convergence, that's bad because the variable is now, it went from the denominator uh, to the numerator, and that's bad for convergence because this is going to be infinity minus 2, uh, which is infinity, of course. So we can say diverges by integral test. Oh, and I kind of ran into the other one, didn't I? Oh, that's all right. That one's really easy. What can we use on the last example I have? Nth term test. Limit as n approaches infinity of 3n minus 6 over 2n plus 1 is equal to 3 halves, which is not 0. Diverges by nth term test. Find the first four non-zero terms in the general term of the power series generated by this at x equals 3. Well, the first thing you need to take care of is the fact that uh, it's centered at 3. So we have 1 over 2 minus x minus 3. Now we can't just throw a minus 3 in randomly. Uh, so we have to balance that out. If we distributed the, the negative through, we'd have 2 minus x plus 3. So I really need to minus 3 again. So really I've added 3 and I've subtracted 3 to the denominator. You can do that. You can add nothing. That's okay. Uh, that's going to be 1 over negative 1 minus x minus 3. Well, I need it to look like a, a geometric series, the power series. a sub 1 over 1 minus r. That's equal to, I need that one, I need that negative one to be a one. Uh, so we have negative one over one plus x minus three, right? We just multiply the top and bottom by negative one. That makes that bottom one a positive now. Then finally, uh, we've kind of arrived where we want to be. Negative one over one minus negative x minus three. So now we have the a sub one over 1 minus the r. Uh, so a sub 1 is negative 1, the r is negative x minus 3. We have negative 1 plus x minus 3 minus x minus 3 squared plus x minus 3 to the third plus dot 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 plus they want the general term also but it's alternating negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then x minus 3 to the n. Now, I need the n plus 1 because I really want to start the x minus 3s. I want to start that with 0. Uh, so that's why we have the n plus 1. You could have n minus 1. If you start at 1, then it would be slightly different. But uh, as long as they match, you're going to get full credit. If f of x is represented by that series, is there a relative max or a relative min at x equals 0? Justify your answer. Uh, f prime of 0 is equal to 2x minus 9x squared over 4 plus 8x to the third over 5 minus 35x to the fourth over 15. Now if I plug 0 into that, uh, so f prime now is 0. That means we have a min or a max there. It had to be 0. If it was anything else, we wouldn't have a min or a max. So we kind of expected that. Now, here's where it can vary a little bit. 
Uh, the second derivative would be 18x, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, I need the 2. Uh, 2 minus 18x over 4. Uh, we won't worry about reducing. It's not really that crucial. Now, we could keep going, but we already kind of know the answer. Uh, we have 140 over 15x to the third. Now, if you plug 0 into that, you get 2. So the second derivative of 0 is 2, which means uh, the function is concave up. And uh, right there, the, the first derivative is zero, so we have that horizontal tangent line. Uh, so we have a relative minimum at x equals zero, because first derivative is equal to zero, and second derivative is positive. Now, we, it seems somewhat redundant, but if it says justify your answer, now we're looking for kind of an English sentence to sum up what you did. How do you know it's a minimum? So give me a good answer on that, okay? Uh, we have an alternating series here. Show that the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero approximates f of one with an error less than one over 500, justify your answer. Now if it's second degree, that doesn't necessarily mean second derivative. It usually does because second derivative usually goes with x squared. But we're just looking for x squared, so there's the second degree. Like the degree of this polynomial, x to the third plus two x squared minus four, the degree is three of that polynomial. So if we're looking for a second degree and it's a Taylor polynomial, we're looking for the x squared. Now the error will be less than the first omitted term on an alternating series. Now if it's not alternating, we can't make all these claims. Uh, so the error will be less than <clears throat> one over six factorial. That's the first omitted term, and it's, it's when we plug one in for the x, which is equal to one over 720, which is less than one over 500. Now, how can we, we haven't written down why we can make this claim. So it says justify your answers, or the answer here. The error of an alternating series is less than the first omitted term one over six factorial which is less than one over 500 so there's what says justify your answer that's a that's a nice english sentence that explains how i know that i've done the problem correctly Find the first four terms and the general term for that, of, of the series, right? Of the series that represents that function. Uh, so, what do we do? What's that? Because we know e to the x, don't we? We're going to build it, right? Very good, we're going to build it. Start with e to the x. That's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial. You're supposed to know sine and cosine. You're supposed to know e to the x, and you're supposed to know 1 over 1 minus x. Those are the four you need to know. Now, e to the 2x squared is a pure uh, replacement. Out front would be a multiplier for e. So that's all replacing. 1 plus 2x squared plus 4 x to the fourth over two factorial plus eight x to the sixth over three factorial. So there's the first four terms and the general term. All right, so now the general term plus dot, 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 plus uh, we have two to the n, we have x to the two n over n factorial.
Find the interval of convergence. Uh, we have the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, there's no negatives on this, so I don't really need the absolute value, but you could have it. Uh, 2 to the n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 2 over uh, n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 2 to the n x to the 2n. Uh, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, we have an extra 2 on top. We have two extra x's on the top, which is x squared. And then I can write this n factorial stuff as n factorial times n plus 1. So like 6 factorial is 5 factorial times 6. The n factorials will cancel out. And now we're left with uh, n plus 1 in the denominator, n plus 1. But if you take the limit as n approaches infinity for, for the n part, of course, this becomes 0 times x squared, which is we want to know when is that less than 1. Uh, well, it's always less than 1. So negative infinity to infinity on that piece. Now, if you do all the math, I'm not going to make up a brand new problem, but if you do all the math and you end up with uh, n plus 1 limit as n approaches infinity times x squared, that's going to be infinity. Oh, that, that's probably, well, that's okay. x squared, that's okay. It's less than 1. Now, x has to equal 0. That's when that'll be less than 1. Uh, so the interval of convergence would be just simply 0. There would only be one value. But the more common one we've seen throughout the homework is something like this. That would be x equals 2. Interval of convergence is not quite an interval, it's just 2. So the radius of convergence on that, over there to the right, would be uh, 0. Any questions? Is that it? That is it. Uh, that is, that's a great representation of day one's test. Now I'm not saying that that's all of it. There's a couple other pieces that I just expect you to be able to figure out. But if you, do, if you can do that much right there, you're going to do very well. Uh, day two will be uh, all free response. So we have kind of a normal test and then a free response day. So that's what you can look forward to. I will have a review session tomorrow morning. I'll probably do more of, a little more of this, uh, look at an AP question, and uh, that'll be it. Take the test.